Good evening, St. John. Mel Vincent, candidate for mayor in the upcoming May 10th uh, St. John municipal elections. Uh, exciting night tonight to uh, finally uh, finally get online, uh, learn a little bit about uh, Facebook Live and uh, how it works and uh, all that exciting stuff. Um, you know, in my uh, in my job as a, uh, a home builder, a new home builder, and uh, and real estate agent, I uh, I use social media uh, to a degree, but most of it is, uh, is stuff we record and. Uh, you know, as we're touring our homes and showing them to uh, to people, and so tonight is uh, is my first uh, foray into uh, into this new format, Facebook Live. So bear with me. I hope I can uh, uh, entertain you at least uh, at the very least, and hopefully we can uh, begin a uh, what I would like to call a, a conversation uh, about affordable housing. Um, you know, it's an important topic. Uh, it's a very current uh, topic that uh, is. Uh, is an issue within our city uh, right now, and I've got some thoughts. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I've been in uh, politics uh, for a long time, as I've, I've shared in some of my um, my previous uh, you know, campaign material under when we made announcements and whatnot. Uh, I was about five, maybe six years old when my father uh, began his, uh, uh, his political career on, on Common Council. Uh, so uh, at 55 years young, uh, though some days I don't feel it, um, I've got almost 50 years in this business and you know I, I've not been one to um, kind of step out into this limelight as I've, uh, as I've done in this campaign, but um, today I, you know, I feel I've got something to offer and I, I want to be a part of, of making this, uh, this city uh, so much more than what it is today. And you know we're on the right track, I, I really appreciate many of the things that Mayor Darling has done, you know, his long-term fiscal plan uh, is a is a solid uh, uh, foundation for us to build. Um, and as I've dubbed in our campaign, uh, it's time to build. Uh, so I think it's fitting. I think uh, his vision and uh, and some of the thoughts that I have, I think, are going to go uh, hand in hand uh, as we uh, grow and and build uh, this city to be the city that it uh, that it can be. But uh, tonight, I wanted to talk to uh, you about a topic that's. Kind of near and dear to me. So as a builder, um, you know, I I know what the, the housing issues are that uh, that plague us, um, and wanted to share some some thoughts. Uh, I'm also very conscious as uh, as the mayor of the city, you uh, you also need to be careful that you don't um, position uh, some of your opinions too strongly. Um, you know, it's it's uh, the mayor's job to make sure that all voices are heard uh, at the council table and that everybody has. Um, a spot to to uh, to talk about uh, their issues and their concerns, and you know when we look at a lot of governance models and and um, the way uh, you know we we need to make sure we understand all the issues and have all the facts. And uh, and and today there's a lot of these topics. I don't have all of the uh, comments from you, and I don't have all the facts uh, that the city would have. So I'm I'm very conscious of that. And uh, as we go through tonight. Um, you know, I'm going to share ideas in a, in a general and a philosophical way. You know, some we may drive down a little further, but we're not trying to get to the to the roots of the tree. We're uh, just beginning a conversation. I want you to get a feel for who I am, uh, how um, you know I would uh, conduct myself as, uh, as mayor. Um, you know, I'm a thinker. I like to understand issues. Um, I don't jump to conclusions quickly. Um, you know, it, it, I believe everything needs. Uh, a thorough uh, vetting to make sure we, we truly understand it. I hate when we, we make public policy on the fly as uh, the lingo goes in, uh, in the political world. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna um, you know, share that and, and hopefully you'll, you'll share some ideas too, um, whether it's here tonight or, or with me in the, in the future as, uh, as we go. Um, I really don't have a time frame. Uh, as, uh, as many of you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm a dad to a seven-year-old and as I uh, kind of look up at the clock, I, I also have a dad role to, to perform tonight and I'm going to be conscious uh, of that, but hopefully we'll have some, some dialogue. Did have some questions emailed in and we'll, we'll try to cover um, those as much as we can. Uh, I've had a few texts and I see a few more popping up on, on my uh, phone. So if I seem a little distracted, I might be reading something uh, for a second. So affordable housing, what is it? Um, and uh, you know, it's it's this uh, this topic for tonight. You know, we we say affordable housing, but I think what we really are talking about is um, 
is a uh, is subsidized housing, and that's that's a completely different uh, topic. And I want to be uh, very cognizant uh, of it. So, to me, when I talk affordable housing, I think that we've got uh, subsidized housing, we have affordable housing, and then we can have subsidized affordable housing. Housing, and uh, and then there's some some stuff we can we can drive down in there. So, let's take a second to um, to talk about um, the um, uh, the subsidized program. So, under you know federal and municipal uh, governments, there is uh, subsidization that can uh, take place um, to help offset somebody's rent or, or mortgage payments um, so that they keep their uh, their housing um, financial requirements below uh, like a 30% threshold. I think that's what uh, NB Housing Social Development uh, uses. Um, those are typically market-driven units, um, meaning that uh, the, uh, you know, have established what uh, the market has dictated as rent and uh, government and agency of government uh, makes up the difference between what the person can afford to pay and uh, and what the uh, the operator of the facility private or or, or non uh, profit are uh, are doing affordable housing becomes uh, a little uh, a little different in the sense that it's uh, is the home affordable and uh, hey guys as a builder i can tell you in the last dozen years pricing has risen dramatically um, we used to have a kind of an entry level product that I'd, I'd tell you, you know, um, not counting the land was like 169.9, 179.9. Uh, that house today, you know, is is in almost $100,000 more expensive than it was as little as 8, 10, 12 years. This uh, is in, uh, you know, in, in what's caused us to get there. Um, and unfortunately, you know, for me, it's it's not because we're charging more money. Uh, for labor or making more money, it's uh, a lot of it has been driven down in uh, in government uh, policy. Um, so as uh, as subsidized uh, housing goes, I think that's a pretty much you know as as long as there's a government program, it's going to happen. And and tonight I, I wanted to talk more about the affordability factor and and how we can um, improve um, that uh, that aspect. And some of this is is not within the control. And uh, one of the emails. Um, that I got uh, spent some time talking about, you know, we've only got certain uh, abilities as a municipal government, and and, uh, and that's often something that I've I've experienced um, over my years as to people not understanding what the the differences are between uh, municipal, provincial, and, and federal government responsibilities. And again, I know uh, Mayor Darling uh, has spent a couple of videos I've seen uh, that that he's talked about, like the role of the mayor, the role of government, and those are uh, awesome little. Uh, almost tutorials, if you want to say, to uh, to help you understand that. So uh, as a municipal government, we control local bylaws, where you can do something, uh, how you have to do it, you know, from a building. Uh, interpret some of the, uh, the building code requirements for safety and all of those kinds of, of things. And one of the, the things that I, I really applaud um, uh, the mayor and, uh, and council for doing uh, recently was a change uh, to the classification of, uh, of, uh, of zoning, and that was the introduction of uh, the mini home category. Now, I want to be really clear, and this is often uh, a bit of a, a challenging point for me as a builder of manufactured housing. So I do modular homes, I do mini homes. We we uh, we have an affiliation with a uh, a plant that makes our product, and then we bring it uh, to town and uh, and finish it uh, here. So uh, often, mini homes are confused with mobile homes. That product is not the same product at all. So please don't, uh, you know, if you hear me referring to mini homes, I'm referring to a product that is, you know, today is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we've got, uh, you know, with my company, um, uh, there's two other ones here in the city. And I don't want to make this a promotion about uh, my business, but, um, and I'm going to talk about one of my competitors, um, you know, uh, Northrop's and, uh, and, and uh, Westmoreland Homes and, uh, and Oak Hill Homes have a couple of great mini home products uh, sitting on uh, their lot. And I'm sure any of you that drive by Rossi Avenue, you can see an absolutely stunning uh, product that is uh, is available and is quite affordable. Uh, and I think there's some other changes we can do um, that can make uh, housing uh, far more uh, affordable uh, with uh, with some just a, a little bit different. Uh, Um, then, um, you know, for me, the subsidized affordable is obviously a combination uh, of those two. And I'm just looking at some notes that uh, that I made uh, just so I could could stay on uh, on topic. But 
for example, let's uh, let's talk about the cost to build today. So when we're when we're looking at affordability um, today to build a uh, you know a, a one two bedroom apartment that uh, you see a lot of them going up and, and I am oh so pleased to see finally some inventory hitting the market uptown. We've got some great builders uh, doing some great uh, uh, builds that are really going to help uh, alleviate a lot of the difficulty we have with getting. Uh, uh, an apartment, particularly in the uptown area, but we've got some stuff out east and some, some stuff in north. Um, probably need to work a little bit uh, uh, more in uh, in the west side uh, to find uh, more more land. And I know there's some stuff uh, that I've spent a little bit of time working on with some other developers, trying to uh, to help them. And uh, we can carry on some some conversations with the uh, um, with the province in uh, in that uh, in that regard. Um, so with that. Um, We've, uh, when we look at cost today, uh, a typical one, two bedroom apartment is gonna run you somewhere in the vicinity of $150,000 to build. Um, for a builder, uh, that cost is there. Um, and uh, on, the, on the opposite side of it, if, if the builder is, is also the, uh, you know, the operator, even if he is building it for somebody else, he now has to uh, add some operational cost to that. Uh, you know, it's got to factor in, in maintenance and, uh, and obviously if it's a, if it's a profit sector driven, uh, business, then there's going to be some profit in there. If it's not in profit, then, you know, they, uh, they're going to be able to, uh, to move, uh, you know, at a little more, uh, affordability, but sometimes it's harder for them to get the funding, uh, to, to move in that regard. So when, when all of those get factored in, ultimately, you know, a formula drives a price, uh, out the other end and, you know, in new construction, we're seeing significant, uh, changes to um you know to cost and you know it wasn't that long ago um you know and it, it might be more in that 10 12 year period uh but in, in the big scheme of things that's not that long ago Seventy five thousand was uh, was a price point so uh government policy has, has changed a lot of that in things such as you know we had a two percent increase in the hst um getting a little technical here but the way concrete forms so your your basement was uh formed up there was a change there where uh, foundation contractors had to uh, make their platforms a little wider and, and that added to the cost. Um, just recently this year, uh, stair treads, uh, we now have to make them about, uh, uh, I think it's uh, 13 inches instead of 12. Uh, anyway, it was an inch difference and that sounds small. However, it's it's over a foot. And now a lot of the plans that builders have been using, you know, for the last uh, number of years uh, are no longer good. They've got to redraw them and make changes and, and that adds cost. Um, you know, uh, we've obviously had a, a big increase in, in, uh, in lumber cost with the softwood lumber tariffs. Now that's starting to show some movement and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll keep that going. Um, you know, insulation requirements, um, you know, all this stuff. Now, some of these are good policies. I don't, not, uh, not stating that they are, uh, they should be thrown out. However, they, they had an impact on cost and, you know, and, and here's where I go back to some of my, my opening comments that um, we we need to make sure we understand the total implication of every decision we make. Now, sometimes for, you know, hindsight is a great uh, a great tool, and and I can talk about those things because yes, they've they've impacted us and and uh, and been and you know so when we try to make something more affordable, yet we've we've increased. And uh, Brent, I see that you you talked about that uh, more strict. Uh, um, you know, the, the, code, the building codes are becoming uh, more strict and absolutely, and even the interpretation of the building code. Um, you know, in, in Greater St. John, you know, we've got a number of districts um, where the interpretation of the code even changes. So if I'm, I'm building in St. John, I may have one interpretation by the local inspector. And if I go to Grand Bay, Ross, Equus, Pamsis, wherever, I may get a completely different one. And that's a struggle for a builder. So there's a lot of different things uh, around uh, this topic that, that can impact on um, on pricing, and it's uh, it's a it's certainly a uh, a big concern, and and a lot of it you know uh, maybe doesn't have to happen uh, in the fashion that it uh, that it has. Um, the, um, the 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 challenge that I see is is that sometimes policy uh, was good intended but had significant consequences. So you know um, as people have asked and I've had a, a few uh, emails, you know, will I promise to do this or will I promise to do that? That's that's not my style. Um, I'm not going to make you an empty promise uh, to make it a campaign promise that you know we're we're going to do um, X, Y, or or uh, or Z. Um, I will tell you and, and give you a, an appreciation for my philosophy and where I'm coming from. Um, I like to collaborate. Um, you know, I think when 
like-minded uh, minds come together and want to truly solve uh, problems, uh, there's not much we can't fix and, and solve. And, and I think that's been a big issue uh, that has been missing, that, that willingness for a community to come together from all its sectors um, can really drive uh, our, our community to where um, we need it to, uh, to be and, uh, and, and go. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge part um, of just who I am as a, as a, as a person. Um, you know, it, um, you know, and, and maybe I'm repeating myself here, but um, the price of a home, 30 to 50% in the last, you know, half a dozen to a dozen years, uh, staggering, just a staggering number as to how uh, that has happened. So St. John's created this new uh, zoning category, and I, I think that's a that's a tool that we can improve upon. Um, you know, as, as a builder, I wished we had gone one step further and had maybe designated some areas where that new zoning classification could um, uh, could help us uh, get through the process quicker. Because as it sits now, I still have to apply to uh, to the city to have that area rezoned based on this new zoning classification. And that takes time and adds costs and all that stuff. So if we had done a little bit of um, um, who, uh, you know, a little more planning and maybe designated some, some areas, uh, it might have facilitated some, some, bigger, uh, some bigger opportunity that we could, we could bring in some more affordable housing. You know, uh, particularly in the uptown core, we, we have some infill issues. And um, another one of the uh, emails that I received talked about prior, excuse me, priority neighborhoods and, you know, can we, can we do something to, um, to address those, those concerns? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm big time aware. I mean, uh, you know, the displacement of one community uh, for the, uh, the benefit of another is, is a huge challenge and, and, and certainly a concern uh, that I have in the uptown uh, core. We're seeing a lot of great development and absolutely 110% behind it. We need more of it. And uh, I've met with some folks recently and there's more uh, coming and I want to um, this city. It's a huge part of, uh, of our campaign. Um, it, it also leaves us with And another individual talked about derelict homes, how long it takes us to, to deal with them. And should we have early warning systems and, and that kind of stuff? Uh, you know, yeah. And, and the more we know and the sooner we know it, the better we can act on it. Um, you know, not sure how we can manage all of that, but I, I certainly like uh, that concept and want to learn and, and, and know more about it. Uh, but when I look to some of the infill housing and I, and I think of solutions like uh, what the, uh, the mini home product has and you know, yes, when it looked more trailer-like and all that, I get it that you probably don't want it next to whatever you're developing. That product and the, the, the newer technologies today that have existed give us some opportunity that we can bring in uh, some affordable uh, housing standards. And, and, and even, you know, working with the, the provincial government to look at how, um, you know, what their requirements are for a unit. You know, I, I very much look at housing as a stepping stone. Uh, the sooner we can get into it, um, and 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 allow somebody to work their way uh, through that uh, that progression. And I remember, you know, the first house that that I bought certainly is not the same house that I live in uh, today. Though I look at my house as a house, I don't consider you know uh, something that it's got to be a showcase. And live in a very you know traditional split entry home in Forest Hills, uh, and and proud to live there. It's where I grew up, and right across from the ball fields, and love everything about uh, about my community. But still, as we as we grow and invest, and and sometimes I wonder. If we if we changed our, our standards for uh, subsidized housing and maybe make the units a little smaller, uh, we could help make them more affordable. Uh, you know, maybe we can get into some you know co-op type of, of of housing projects where like-minded people can come together and and create an affordable program by um, you know uh, using their collective power and uh, and accomplishing uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, a lot of different uh, uh, product and solutions. So. You know, those are just some some basic ideas, and and uh, you know, as I'm trying to read questions coming in here, um, uh, so Darcy says, what do you think about a percent of new construction has to be affordable? So if a builder uh, builds 100 units, five must be affordable. Yeah, Darcy, that's a, that's a great uh, a great question, um, and, and in a lot of cases, that's being done today. Um, you know, I, I, Darcy, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're an East St. John uh, guy and uh, you'll know that there's a new building uh, going up uh, in, uh, in that area and that project has and it's one that uh, I worked uh, with the, uh, the builder there to, uh, 
to try to get some subsidized units in there. And that's that's exactly how it's done. Um, he's able to get some funding through the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, um, and uh, and it gives them kind of the seed money to get going and uh, and to get the backing of, uh, of banks. I think we all realize today, uh, you know, the requirements for, for banks to finance is becoming a greater challenge. And, and that's certainly a, a case of, of what uh, many builders face. So CMHC has some programs uh, to help get them started and then the province can kind of come in and, uh, and help um, um, do uh, get the project going. Sorry, a little distracted, something popped up on my screen, I'm not sure um, what it is. Um, uh, Brent, uh, yes, smaller construction overall is a must. We live with vast amounts of empty wasted space in North America as a modular home builder, I'm sure. You've seen amazing products which maximize space and efficiency. Oh yeah, Brent. Uh, you know, I know you got a uh, obviously a background in in construction, and you know, we we look at just how designs have changed uh, over the years, and we're getting uh, far more efficient with everything. So um, I think I got off track there at one point too. So this is something I'm going to have to figure out better for uh, future uh, events of this. Uh, too many ideas. It's 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 odd to look at a camera and talk, but have nothing uh, coming back. So um, appreciate some of your uh, your likes and whatnot uh, popping up, so I can. Uh, better understand um, uh, the uh, the feel to uh, to our conversation. Um, you know, I, one of the things I looked at, and I guess I was starting to talk about um, how uh, a unit can be, um, uh, you know, meet a certain standard. So I think NB Housing Social Development has a requirement for somewhere around 600, 650 square feet. Um, you know, and, and that's that's certainly not a big unit, um, but it uh, it's 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 certainly you know, the larger the unit has to be, the more the cost is going to be because, you know, there's there's certainly general principles around uh, per square foot numbers and what they'll uh, they'll cost and, uh, and 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 cause you to spend. So uh, as we go forward with those kinds of things, you know, one of the concepts I had, you know, when we look at, uh, at many homes, and I don't want that to be the end all be all, and there's another one I want to talk about, um, the, uh, you know, if we were to bring it down to 400 square feet, uh, a mini home could be divided up into three. You know, the cost of a typical mini home today and a fairly nice one, um, you know, could make those units well under $100,000 each, and they're now affordable. Um, the other product that I want to talk about, because I see time's rolling right around, and I was thinking somewhere around a half an hour would be a, uh, not too long to, to chat and talk with you guys and give you a chance to, uh, to ask some questions, um, is tiny homes. Um, you know, a really great little product. Um, and it's, it's a niche that uh, I think we need to explore more. Um, you know, at present, for the most part, it doesn't meet a lot of the building code requirements, particularly around uh, uh, insulation uh, and, and making it a year-round uh, product. But I, I think, again, uh, technology has, uh, has improved so dramatically that we have a chance to, um, uh, you know, enhance that product and, and, and make a, an offering. And, um, you know, one of the, uh, and here's a bit of an idea or a, or a thought. And, um, you know, when I think of the tiny home, I, I think of a particular clientele uh, that would like that product. Uh, I'm not the smallest guy on two feet and uh, a tiny home as much as I love them. And I, and I think it'd be awesome to, to, uh, to have one. Climbing up into that little wee space of a bunk, this guy's not going to fit in there. Um, so, you know, I, I think, again, there's a, there's a, there's a clientele uh, for that as there is a clientele for, for, uh, for anything. So uh, I'd like to see us explore that. And, and that would be, uh, in, in a lot of cases, um, you know, uh, a municipal issue around bylaws, where can you put them and, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, as uh, some of you probably know, the uh, city has put out a request for proposals for the Cherry Brook Zoo. And, you know, in my mind, hey, that, that might be uh, something to look at. You know, uh, one, that product does come on wheels. It's, it's, it's effectively an RV. Um, you know, man, I think we could do something quite innovative and creative uh, around uh, giving people who uh, want that product because it's a solution that's being used in other municipalities. Um, I don't, uh, uh, I haven't done enough read up on it as to how we're handling the, the winter requirements of the, of the Canadian climate and certainly down in the U.S. Uh, it's an, it's an easy uh, it's an easy answer um, up here we've got you know we've got that uh, that factor of the cold and I think we could look at it It'd be interesting to need to explore you know obviously water and sewage requirements uh, you know policing and fire uh, it's a remote site that doesn't have but you know there, there's there's something there that I thought uh, it, it could be a, a, a potential solution because in my mind I'm always conscious of of, of the impact of any uh, any solution 
on an already existing environment, and I think we can work with it. Um, you know, the same thing with uh, with many homes. You know, we've got a number of parks uh, around our city uh, that have uh, existed just the way they are for a long time, uh, and they've been a, 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 a great affordable product. But I think we can also find uh, and enhance that a little bit to uh, to make it more of a you know almost a, a subdivision versus a park. Uh, you know, we, we use park, and that's a nice imagery. Um, but uh, you know, if we could give a little more land, you know, open that up a little more, um, you know, find it close to, um, you know, I think then we can expand uh, on a, on a lot of those issues. Uh, and um, uh, Courtney, uh, I see that you said, uh, what are your thoughts on affordable on offering affordable housing so women and gender? Uh, diverse folks can escape domestic uh, abuse uh, situations. Something just happened. I think it disappeared on me. Or uh, where did? Okay, no, sorry. Must have been another question that came in the bottom. Yeah, I see uh, Brent's talking about something else again. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, yeah, Courtney. I, you know, I, I worked um, with um, uh, the New Brunswick Real Estate Association lobbying uh, the federal government on uh, a lot of uh, of what you're you're uh, you're talking about and. Um, you know, in, in domestic situations um, where somebody's uh, housing requirements have, have uh, obviously changed uh, because of that situation, you know, banking and financing and all of that um, doesn't really change with it. They've got no opportunity maybe to use uh, some other sources of income or savings. Uh, and uh, we lobbied uh, government to, to look at this um, in, uh, in, in exactly domestic situations to say, you know, allow the individual to find an, another creative solution uh, to the uh, affordability or the way they can finance a, a home. And, uh, and absolutely, it's there. And I, and I think probably my overall comments on, on trying to, to create an affordable product that, um, you know, average folks can, uh, you know, can obtain, regardless of what their situation is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is desperately uh, needed. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, gender uh, diversity is, is exactly uh, there. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it comes down to, you know, um, a better understanding. Uh, you know, I often in, in my head, and, and I don't want to get down uh, this road tonight, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's for another, uh, another time, but, you know, to, to me, a lot of our world's problems, uh, come down to, uh, you know, almost, you know, a lack of understanding and, and, and frankly, ignorance. Um, and I, I think that the quicker we can, um, truly sit down and understand, uh, uh, the issues that people have, uh, and, and working out. And this is where my collaboration co comes together. And, you know, I'm, I'm the first guy to put up my hand, uh, and say, um, yeah, I'm a white uh, English-speaking uh, guy living uh, in a country that is 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 way beyond privileged. Uh, my life was absolutely um, privileged. I had a uh, a mom and a dad that I, I I don't know that I could have scripted you a, a better family situation. You know, uh, three sisters and a brother. Uh, you know, all kinds of aunts and uncles, and I don't know. I think we're. 50 or 60 different, you know, first cousins. So, yeah, I grew up in a in a pretty uh, privileged uh, opportunity. I mean, my dad was a, a civil servant. Uh, my mom had the five of us uh, at home, um, and uh, and it was there. But uh, I'm also very cognizant of that fact. And um, and so when I look at others, and uh, that have a different uh, upbringing and a different situation, you know, uh, growing up in, in East Saint John, I, I certainly experienced. Uh, a wide range of, of of situations, and and it uh, and it's why I raised my son uh, in uh, in East Saint John. I want him to grow up in understanding that um, not everybody has it easy, and uh, and to be aware and, and conscious of, of that reality. So, um, but I also know not everybody looks at at life that way. So for me, I've always tried to pride myself on, on being understanding, being compassionate. Uh, being uh, empathetic. Now, I'm a business guy, uh, and I don't uh, I don't look at that as a negative either. Um, you know, it uh, you know numbers are the way I I approach things. But balancing my uh, my empathy driven side of me and my compassionate side uh, is often a lot of a motivator uh, to to fixing some of the social problems that that uh, that ail us. And and you know I, I think you've got to come from a lot of different perspectives and, and, and my circle in life has, has, has been pretty wide and pretty in, encompassing because uh, just being one dimensional to me is, is uh, 
you know some of the solutions that I've talked about earlier can can apply to your uh, your situation uh, perfectly. So thanks for the question, uh, Brent. I guess you're back with uh, small footprint housing. A slab can totally meet requirements, but we may need to refill bylaw 817. Uh, a ton of empty lots right now could have five to six small footprint houses. We don't have to do tiny homes on wheels. We can do tiny homes on slabs, uh, and we can cost these for about 70k. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Brent. Uh, that's that's the kind of number you know. Taking that mini home and uh, you know, which is a you know, a version of that uh, that product certainly dials right into uh, to your comments and and. Uh, uh, again, your background, uh, like mine, certainly shows through there, and uh, great thoughts um, on uh, on that. Um, I think, folks, that covers a lot of what I wanted to talk about today, and I think you've uh, you've uh, shared some of your insights. And you know, as we as we go forward, if you've got some ideas, you know, something here has has caused you to uh, to want to um, think about. Um, some other positive solutions. Listen, I, I'm 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 a lover of ideas. Um, you know, I, I often said in in uh, in some of the businesses uh, that I own. So, for example, I owned the uh, Colbrook Esso on uh, on Rossi Avenue. I bought that I think in '95 and uh, tore the old building down in '99 and built what you see there uh, today. And you know, often what I said to my staff was, guys, we can keep doing the same thing every day. We can try something new and creative. Uh, and if it works, we can succeed. And if not, we can always go back and um, and uh, and uh, and do it the way we were doing it. Um, however, I just still want the intelligent thought behind it. We're, I'm not going to rush to to uh, to any decisions, but um, we're certainly uh, um, happy to uh, to sit down and, and talk something through. Uh, again, policy on the fly doesn't doesn't work for me, but um, you know, having a, a live active uh, uh, conversation. Uh, hi, Brad. Uh, certainly. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate that uh, that comment. And um, we, uh, you know, I'm, uh, uh, Brad and and his son and my son uh, enjoy uh, the sport of motocross together. Uh, we met uh, met up uh, uh, last year, kind of just uh, by fluke, and didn't realize that either one of us were from St. John. But two St. Johners ended up talking at uh, the Riverglade uh, motocross uh, track. And so, yeah, Brad, you and you've been uh, big time helpful on a couple issues. Uh, that you bring to the table, and I, I appreciate that feedback um, that you and I had, uh, had talked about. Uh, I think one day in your garage. So um, you know, guys, it's it's about uh, you know uh, having great uh, discussions uh, and and building forward. Uh, hi, Keith. Uh, yeah, awesome to see from you. And yeah, we had a lot of fun in those SO days, uh, didn't we? And, and I, uh, that uh, that's uh, that's touching. Uh, glad that. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, depart some some wisdom back there, um, and uh, you know really appreciated having you on board. You were a big part, and you know I believe in empowering people. Um, you know our greatest resource is the people that we have, and you know I want to empower uh, citizens to to make uh, uh, our city uh, better. So, um, folks, I, ho I hope this has given you a little bit of a feel for me. Um, you know I don't know that we. Uh, you know, answered really specific questions, but I'm, I'm sure I gave you a, a, a bit of an idea on who and what I uh, what I am. Um, you know, another person asked me about. Uh, sorry, I just realized this now about uh, the St. John Land Bank. Um, you know, the St. John Land Bank is a is a is a great program. It uh, it's an organization kind of outside the uh, you know physically outside the city, but outside of the, the governance of the city, uh, and they are um, they're assembling land. Uh, particularly in a lot of priority neighborhoods. Um, so rather than being small pieces um, that you know are challenged today, and you know I think there's some real great opportunities there to better utilize that program and and uh, and make it more widely known. And that might be the, the big driver. Um, and there's some you know it's been recently um, you know uh, capitalized. So there's some some opportunities that are that are going to be coming from there. And I think that would be a, a great program to. Uh, uh, to dive down into uh, to a little more. So um, before I start rambling and just uh, cover nothing, um, thanks, folks. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, it hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. Um, you know, like I said, it's a little uncomfortable talking to the to the computer. But um, you know, my plan will be on a on a regular basis. Uh, we'll put one of these together and maybe three or four days beforehand. We'll kind of send out a note as to what we're going to talk about, and uh, we can build on it. Uh, you know, I see you know attendance is. Uh, uh, jumping, you know, uh, in around uh, 50, 75 uh, people. So that's 
this campaign is really unique. Uh, you know, it's I'm, uh, you know I'm a guy who likes to knock on doors and talk face to face with people. Uh, so this has been uh, a, a new learning curve, and we're going to try to meet your needs and be as creative as we can. So this is a bit of a start. So uh, thanks, folks. Uh, really appreciate this. Have a have a great night. Uh, thank you for uh, your input and looking for a lot more. So if you need to email uh, further questions to me, uh, info at melvincent.ca. Uh, I don't know whether I get to continue to see stuff uh, here. Uh, Jonathan, Debbie, uh, uh, thank you. Um, good, uh, good to have you on here too and, and uh, see you you're watching. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, good night. And I'm now going to go try to be a dad, okay? Got a seven-year-old uh, that uh, likes me to tuck him in and rub his back and uh, you know, I guess, frankly, that's, uh, that's a job that, you know, makes me feel great every day. So, uh, good night. We'll talk soon and, uh, uh enjoy your, uh, your upcoming weekend. Thank you.